All over the world we're faced with the dilemma of replacing old historic boilers. A lot of boilers that we find on locomotives, steam tractors, boats, steamships, they were built almost a hundred years ago. And the simple reality is a lot of these boilers are just falling apart. They just can't withstand the contraction, expansion, being fired up repetitively for that many years. Hey, Wasatch Railroad Contractors has gone out and got an ASME S-Stamp, which allows us to build brand new code boilers. And we focus on locomotive boilers quite a bit, like this one for this 15-inch gauge, 1906 Cagney Class D locomotive. But we build boilers for all types of historic units, boats, tractors, steamships, you name it. If it's got a boiler on it, we can build it. What's neat about the ASME system is that a lot of countries have also adopted the system. So not only can we build code boilers for locomotives, tractors, and boats here in the USA, we can also build them to be jurisdictionally correct in other parts of the world as well. A common question these days is, why is this ASME code thing so important? Well, let's give you the answer the best that we can. The reason it's become so important is because nearly all of the states within the United States of America have adopted the ASME code as the formal code of construction for new pressure vessels. As such, the states are generally requiring that locomotive boilers or pressure vessels in general that are operated within public spaces, be that an amusement park or in some cases even private property where the public has access to that property, the states have the ability and the right to come in and say, hey, what's this pressure vessel you're running? Who built it? When was it built? To what standard was it built? Generally speaking, a lot of the old boilers that we have operating, be them on tractors or in boats or again on steam locomotives, we can't really come back and say, well, it was built to such and such code because it was built by farmer Fred Henry back in 1920. And I know it was good because he was my father's best friend. Well, that may have worked 50 or 20 or 30 years ago, but it doesn't work today. Today, the states want us to be able to stand behind something. And that something that we stand behind is the ASME Code of Construction. What that Code of Construction requires is that we first design the boiler to the code, and then it requires that we actually physically build the boiler to that code. And unless we can design it, unless we can build it to the same code, we can't have that nifty stamp on the back that says, this boiler wasn't built by old Fred Henry. This boiler was built by a company that can have the code behind it and can verify that the code of construction was used in the design and the code of construction was used in the general construction assembly of the boiler. That's why this code is becoming so important. Wasatch Railroad Contractors travels around quite often to shows, particularly steam shows, as it's really our passion. We're asked quite often, what is it about this old historic boiler that just doesn't make it operational anymore? You know, from the outside, it looks great. All the pieces are there, it's not rusted out, there's no pitting in the outside, so what's so wrong with it? Well, let's take one piece apart for you and let's take a closer look at what could be wrong with these old historic boilers. This section has been taken out of this 1904 original Cagney locomotive boiler. And as we bring the piece a little bit closer, we're going to show you what actually happens to the inside of this boiler. As you can see right here, this knuckle, which from the outside is beautiful, has actually torn itself apart on the inside. And the reason that this has turned out this way is greatly due to the fact that this piece, the knuckle, the door sheet, through the process of fire up and cool down, expands and contracts. And though the motion of my hand is quite exaggerated, the sheet is doing exactly like the motion of my hand right now. And in essence, what happens is the inside of the boiler that we can't see begins to tear and rip. And over the course of time, this ripping and this tearing will actually thin the piece out so much that there's nothing left. So what looks good on the outside isn't necessarily always good on the inside. And there are a lot of aspects of these old boilers, like this knuckle, that we simply cannot repair. If this boiler were delivered to us today, and we knew that this inside knuckle was bad, how many options of repair do we really have? Not a lot. This whole back head is put in with rivets. 
we can't we can take the rivets out and put them back in but I'll tell you that we really can't because the cost of removing these rivets and putting them back in is going to be extraordinary furthermore we really can't do it because without taking the entire firebox out we can't get to the back side to re-rivet that piece back in this material is old enough that welding a new piece into this really isn't practical either we'd be putting brand new material into a really old boiler those materials aren't going to interact very well and eventually you're going to be replacing everything forward of the boiler. What we're finding out is that even though it's nice to repair some of these old boilers, we're getting to a point where they just aren't repairable anymore. When we weigh the cost of a brand new boiler like this one, the Cagney Class D type boiler, in comparison to what it would cost to repair this condition, for every dollar spent, we're better off with a brand new boiler. We really believe that in the future, a lot, if not all, historic boilers that are in continual operation will eventually have new boilers built and put on. Because again, the reality is, some of this metal fatigue, we just can't prevent it, we can't fix it, and eventually, the only solution is a brand new boiler. One of our favorite projects are the 15-inch Cagney locomotives that we're currently working on here at Wasatch River Contractors. Right here beside me you see two examples of the locomotives that we're working on. Both of these have brand new ASME S-stamped boilers, code boilers that are, will be operational in almost any state in the Union. But beyond the boilers alone, we've also done a lot of running gear work to both of these locomotives. The locomotives came to us in either non-operational condition or they needed a little bit of work here and there. Wasatch Railroad Contractors is capable of bringing in any size locomotive, putting it here in the shop, being able to do major running gear repairs or minor running gear repairs, install new boilers, completely restore and paint the locomotive and send it back to you operational, ready to run. We're often asked what happens if you come to me as a new customer wanting a particular boiler built, but you don't have a design for it. How do we deal with that in terms of the ASME code? Well, it's actually quite simple. If you can do nothing more but draw a simple sketch of the outside dimensions of your boiler and whatever parameters that it needs to fit into, let's say it's a locomotive boiler that needs to sit on a frame. Well, we need the basic dimensions of the frame. We need to know where the boiler is going to fit in the frame. Or like this boat boiler seen here, we would need to know what the basic dimensions of the foundation of that boiler are supposed to be so we can build a boiler around that. Once we have even the most simple or basic information, we're able through our own engineering department to completely design and certify your boiler through the code. Which means we'll take your basic parameters, space parameters, we'll crunch it all together, we'll design into the boiler the things that you want, say you want to vertical fire tube boiler like this one, or you want a horizontal fire tube boiler, we'll design everything into it that you want, and then we'll come back to you as the owner and say, is this what you're looking for? And if you approve that, we can then build that boiler to the code to meet any specifications that are desired. So really when it comes right down to it, you don't have to have a perfect drawing before you come to Wasatch River Contractors for your boiler needs. We live in a day and age of great technology. The internet has made the world so much smaller. Today we chat on internet forums, we discuss our likes, our dislikes, the things that we really enjoy seeing. And the internet is also the means by which we're able to bring you this video presentation. So we're going to expand on this technology a little bit by providing to you, the viewer, the opportunity of asking us, Wasatch Railroad Contractors, any question you want to ask. Send the question to contact us, and if we select your question, We'll not only answer your question on video, but we'll also take apart any particular item and show you exactly how it works. And through this technology, we can all learn more about the modern steam locomotive. We look forward to hearing from you soon.